Hi, welcome to this new video tutorial and as part of our big data processing video here today we are going to continue with a brand new video on Spring Boot with Kafka, Spark and Cassandra and as the requirement here you should have the JDK uh, 17 installed in your system and then you should also have the latest versions of Maven and then also have uh, Docker version, Docker installed in your system, and then last uh, your favorite IDE, Java IDE. For this case, precisely, you are going to use VS Code, and then so you'll get also the image of uh, that is image of Kafka from Vuzmaster, and then uh, Park version 3.40 and as well as Cassandra 3.11.9. So this is what we need here. And for the demo project that we have will be a web service, which take a message and then pass it to the producer. The producer will send it to the broker and It is processed and saved in the database. So uh, let me just make a bit drawing. So what we start at beginning, we start we have uh, not good at drawing. Here is our REST REST API here. So once we send a message in the web, it's a web service. We'll take a message then pass it to a producer. The producer itself will pass it to uh, the broker here. Here is our broker. And then once the message reaches the broker here, it, is, it will automatically trigger uh, a consumer. Kafka consumer here, we should read the message, and once the message is read, then the message will be passed to uh, the Spark. Here is the Spark stream, where it is processed and transformed. Once the message is transformed, then Computation will be done on it, and then at the end, it is saved in a database. The database that we have here is a NoSQL, which is Cassandra. So here is our Cassandra. So this is a bit the workflow of what we are doing. Here we have uh, our web service, and then here we have our Kafka, and here we have our Spark, and then at end here we have our database. So that is it. This is what we do in this video. So in order to achieve that now, we need to start. Uh, we need to start uh, to create uh, an our Maven projects. And the easiest one to do one is to go on Spring Initializer. Here is the string initializer here. So we select Java. Next is Maven. We need here version 3.34. And here we enter our artifact. We can call it uh, Spring Boot Kafka Spark. Cassandra Cassandra 01 and here in the descriptions here we have Spring Boot and demo project for Spring Boot Kafka Spark and Cassandra. Here is our descriptions here. And then here the packaging is JAR for now. And then Java versions is 17. 
so I think everything is there ready and then on that one is done we are going to generate that here on that one is generated we go uh, let's refresh it here and then we right click our folder to just download from the web and then allow these permissions here mine is in german so it was will be in another language so apply okay then uh, we extract it we have extracting that one once that one is extracted so i will copy this one uh, we copy this one here and put it in a specific folder yeah let's say we put it here and then it is there this one we don't need it so the next thing is to bring our ide our ide is uh vs code vs code is what we need now and go to file new folder go to the folder we have here and then we select this one here so bump here is our sample uh, project that is here so uh, here is been, been built we enable that yeah all this one is there now so we have so many things to do and then we will go like step by step but i will not go too much in the detail i will show you a bit the process on how to do this one without going too much in details otherwise the video is going to be very long so uh, we start with our pom.xml uh, for our pom.xml some of the stuff here are not really needed we can get rid of them we can get rid of them so for these things here which are not needed and then yeah so we have the parents these four here is our folder name screenshot snapshots here is the names the descriptions yeah the descriptions then the properties here so for the properties now we need to add some values here in the properties java 17 spring boot versions uh, this one here and then scala versions through to this we need uh, we are going to need this 2.112 and then also the spark version is 3440 and then all that one is done we are going to add the dependencies here so let's come now and add the dependencies so here is the spring uh, dependencies for the web this one is needed for the web It's the web starter and then we have the kafka dependencies here we have also the spring data here is the spring data dependencies which is needed and also we need spark here so here is the spark and sql for scala which is there we also need jackson for uh, some serializations and then we also need lombok for our entity and then we also need a uh, kafka client 
some common uh, uh, Apache commands, which is there. And especially here, we have this Janino here, which is required uh, by Spark for code generations. And then the remaining were on the testing uh, packages. And then we also need this one here, Java servlet here, which is used by the uh, Spark uh, UI stuffs, UI statistics, and so on. So it's needed by that. We also need that one. And then at end here, we have the plugin here. compiling plugin, plugin for our project. So this is a bit what some of the packages that uh, uh, we need for these projects, if we save everything. And then so far so good, no error here. Then the next thing that we are going to need here is, um, is to prepare our code now. So in order to do that, you will need so many stuffs, but we go step by step. Uh, so I right click this one. We need one package, Java package here. We call it uh, Cassandra package. Enter. I uh, will also need another package here that we call uh, service. We also need the service package. Enter. That is it. And yeah, now in order to start all this stuff here, we start with uh, Cassandra, so we need here a message entity. So we call it Java here. The name of our entity will be uh, we go like a bit bottom up approach here. Message entity. Here is our message entity class here. And then Similarly here, we are going to need uh, one interface called uh, message repository. Message repository, sorry, this one is going to Cassandra. This one is going to Cassandra package. That is it. And then for our package here, we need uh, to make it faster here. So I just prepare this one. So these are the Lombok uh, notations that we need for the getters. Here is the table name that we set. We need the primary key here of type UID and our message. So very simple only two attributes. Then the next one here is the repository. For the repository, we just need to annotate it with a repository. And then we extend it with the Cassandra. Cassandra repository class, which will take uh, two things, our entity and the primary key. So our entity here is message entity, comma, primary key is of type UUID. So that is it here for <laughs> our Cassandra. Cassandra is finished here. Now we need to start with uh, services. 
and then <coughs> you'll need uh, the Cassandra service we need the Cassandra service here so we need to create another class that we call uh, Cassandra service of course we annotate it with the service then the remaining one will just be like this one so we are injecting here what we do here is uh, injecting our repository here here is our method here we pass the message to to that one and we create an instance of the entity then set it and so on so this is not for productions but yeah just to get or to get started and here at the end here we save it in the database so that's what we do and the next thing that we need to have here we need to have here will be uh, the producer service in kafka so we need to have the kafka producer service and then in order to do that here we create also another one kafka we call it Kafka producer service, right? Kafka producer service, and of course, we annotate it with service here, and then for the boilerplate code we have them here so we are injecting here the template kafka template here simple here we pass the topic and the message here and then we use it to send a message uh, to the broker on this topic we attach the message to this topic and then yeah pass it to uh, to the broker so after that one is done here we need to go uh, to the, the what we are expecting and we go to the consumer Kafka consumer service and it's where many of our logic will happen so it's where our processing is happening and saving stuff in the database so we call it Kafka consumer service right here also annotated with service here for the logic for the logics here we go step by step so what we do now is we bring uh, an instance of our Cassandra service is what we have here and here is how we define our listener it's our listener with the topic and the group uh, the group ID we come back to this group ID when we yeah later on so here is the group ID here and the method is there and so once we receive the message we put it print it in the console and then pass it to spark to spark here for processing here and then this is spark processing which take a message here and then we make this uh, declarations here where we connect to here is we connect to Kafka to spark master spark master and then here so we put everything inside uh, this try and catch to uh, for detecting 
the error in the case of exceptions here is the exceptions handling that we do here and then we have a list array So what we do here, the processing that we do here, each message that we take, suppose we give a sentence here, we are going to split it by space here, and then parallelize it, then count the number of words, and then print the total number of words in the console. This is what we do, and after that one is done, we save uh, our initial message in the database here. And here is save here, so here we use Cassandra here, and as you can see, if we go here, we come here and save it in the database. So all this one is done here. The last thing that we need to do is our, our web service. For that one, we need to have a controller. So we declare a message controller. Here is our message controller here that we annotate directly with REST controller, which is there. And then, yeah, for the boilerplate code, we have We have this one here, so we need to import our service. So for the boilerplate code here, we have the URL. Here is the URL that we have, API slash message slash send here. And this is where the URL that we use to send a message, to pass a message to our web service here. And then on the message, is received here, this is the topic name, demo topic, and then, yeah, we pass it here to uh, the Kafka producer, here is where we pass the message to the Kafka producer, and on that one, it's successful here, we print the message, message sent to Kafka, so we return this one here, when everything is successful here, and if we go here in the definitions, this is where we go to uh, our producer and so on. So the whole thing here is uh, finished here. So we have image, everything is there. And then now on this one is finished here. Now we, saw, we still need a couple of things to do. And so we need to configure here our applications here, applications the properties. But in this case here, I prefer to use the YAML here, so we rename it to application.yml here. We take this one off. And then uh, we need to do a set of stuff here. So here is what Cassandra uh, configurations. Here is our Cassandra. The contact point here is Cassandra. This is the host of the Cassandra service from uh, the Docker. And here is the port to which we connect to Cassandra. And the key space here is called uh, demo key space. It's equivalent to the database that uh, database name that we have in the relational database. So this is one, but in Cassandra uh, dictionaries, and we call it jargon, we call it uh, key space. So then we, once we define that one here, we also need to specify the data center we we'll also show you a query how to query that uh, data center once we reach there. And then yeah, then come here Uh, why this is again where this problem is coming from? Uh, let me go back again.
Okay, so there was something wrong here. And Kafka configurations here, yes, the Kafka configurations here, the container. And the Kafka container here, we define the same thing here is use the name of the Kafka service in the in the controller and the port. This is a port 9092, this is the default port. And this is the group ID. Remember, this group ID here is the group ID that we keep using in the consumer here. In the consumer here, this is a group ID. It should match with this group ID that we have. Uh, we have here, it's called my group. And then you can also see that there is called my group here. So that one will match, otherwise, a uh, message may not reach uh, the consumer. So once it is produced here, yeah. and then this is, yeah, we this is the key, uh, we disrealize the key, it's the class that we use, this is the class that we import here, this is the value uh, disrealizations. And then the offset here just mean earlier here just mean that each time that a new consumer will join uh, the queue, he will start reading all the messages. Suppose like we already have 10 messages or the f five messages in the queue and we have a new consumer, then it will go start and go to the beginning so that you can read the history of the queue before uh, doing whatever you want to do. And then here is the producer. In the producer here, here is we serialize uh, the key for the Kafka message. And here also we serialize the value for the Kafka message here. And then also here, this is auto startup listener. This is to make a uh, stuff like each time like suppose when i publish when we produce something to the queue automatically he will trigger with this auto start offset to true all consumers will automatically read them without a delay so that's what this one means here and then this is the server configurations here this port here is what is used uh, this port here is what is used by our applications in the container. So instead of using 8080 here, we set it to 82. I will show you why we want to do this one. So, so this one is done. And then we can save. We save everything. And then once this one is OK, Let's try to see if, um, let's just try to see if everything can go as expected. Then if I write Maven, Maven uh, clean, install, Maven clean install here, what happened? Is the build successful? Of course, here yeah, it's not succeeding here because of uh, testing issues. Yeah. So is it referring to the says So what we are going to do now? Uh, test we have here failed to execute goal here. Sunfire This one. So in order to avoid this one here. We don't need the testing for now. We just need to make it get started. So we can skip the test for now. So we can skip the test. We skipped test and come back to that later. We are interested in setting up uh, the environment. So 
no time to write the test for now. So we can see that the build is successful, it means that everything is okay. Then once the build is successful here, we can see this, uh, our Java file is generated appear here in the target folder. So we are on the right track. And then the next thing that we need to do is now to set up our environments and in because we need to to do that we need to uh, create our docker compose compose.yaml here is our docker compose.yaml and there is where we are going to download all the the images We download all the images and so I just prepared this one here I'm going to not going to write one by one shows it may faster here so we have so many things services we start with the zoo keeper service for Kafka here so here is the image and the zoo keeper port is this one this is 2181 and then we set the network so for everything that we are going to do within uh, the Docker here, all the containers are going to be connected to a single network, and that network is called uh, Kafka network. So then we connect our Zookeeper here to the Kafka network. Once that one is done, we move to the next container here. For the Kafka, we get the image. The port here is 9092. And then we set the listeners. Kafka listen to all interfaces here. You know this one very well from the networking. And then this one here is internal container address for the Kafka. And then here's the broker ID. Uh, yeah, and as you say here, it depends on the zookeeper. And then here, the same thing as we did before, we are going to connect to the Kafka network. Same thing with Cassandra here. Here is a container for the Cassandra that we define here. We get the image, we get the ports. Here are the port for Cassandra query. And then once that one is finished, we connect it to the Kafka network. Then we go to Spark now. We have the Spark master service for cluster management here. We get the image here, the mode here is the master, and then you can see here that we are using this 8080 for the web master, web UI, and then here, after that one is done, we connect it again to the Kafka network, Kafka network, and then uh, the last one here will be the Spark worker. We get this image here, the configurations as before, but here we point it to the master here because we need to point uh, our worker to the master. This one is leading uh, the cluster. In case we have many uh, workers, then you could define them here. So this one is using 81. And then as before, then we connect it uh, as above, we also connect it to the Kafka network. As you can see, all our containers here are connected to the network, and then we use this bridge here to bridge, uh, to bridge them. As you can see, this bridge is, as you say, like it's connecting uh, many all these uh, containers. So this what uh, this is uh, what we can see now about the interesting pattern that we, if you remember here in, uh, well, you have to be very careful. You have to be very careful here when we do this in, especially with port, because we got so many ports. This one here we use, uh, we start with 82. 80, 82 here is for our Springboard applications. If you want to access it, then uh, after 82 here, we use this 81 here for the worker, and then we use this 8080 here for the master, Spark master. So interesting here. This is how we, we, 
we do everything here, and it's interesting, it's important to remember all these uh, aspects. Then the last thing that we need now to do will be our Docker file. And then we call it Docker file, right? We need to create our Docker file. here and during the creations of this docker file here this is the docker file because we already built our applications here we need to take this name here this jar or we can come here right click this one copy this name here and then we are going to add it here for our image. So here we use JDK 17. It should also match with the initial JDK 17 that we have here. So it's a JDK 17. It's here the volumes. Then we copy this one. And then important thing here that is worth mentioning is this one here. If you remove this one, you are going to get stuck with the permissions, at least with latest versions of Java. There are some problem with the uh, permissions accessing uh, this uh, sound.io classes. So we make this one here to give that permissions, right? So it is there. So then on this one is there. Um, so many stops. So we need to build the image. To build the image here, we are going to need uh, we need to build our image. Okay, we just built our image here. Then after that one is completed now, we need to, we need to fire up our container. And then we need to use, a, let's call it Docker. Compose. We need to use this docker compose of uh, so many stuff. Compose fn build. So we are pulling, pulling stuffs here. Mm. Oh, could I have done this one earlier. It will take some time. Uh, sorry for that. So we need to pull uh, the images. Uh, depending on your network, on how fast your computer is. Uh, yeah, when that one is coming here, I will rename this one. As Docker console, I call this one Docker console. And this one here, I'm going to call this one as Cassandra 
and then I will create another shell here that we are going to call uh, Kafka consumer Kafka consumer uh, we come back to that so it's taking some time to pull them Uh, let's create when that one is coming. I will create something like read me. Here is our read me file. And for the readme file here, I will need, I will make use of uh, a command here to create our database. This one we don't need to create them because uh, we set that one here. Uh, what is that? Here we have set this one. Okay, yeah, there's no conditions there, so we need to create that one, not exist is there. Mm, yeah, we need to create it manually for now. So uh, just take again some time. Uh, hoping that everything is go as planned. Okay, we have our five containers which are running. Everything is successful. Uh, that is okay. Five out of five, everything is running. So everything is going as planned. Then now, uh, uh, after that one is finished now, so what we need to do is uh, to come here to Cassandra here, and then we go Docker PS and list the list of um, list. Here we look for the list of containers. We look for Cassandra. Cassandra is here. Container ID is this one. So we copy that one. I will just copy this one, put it here. And then in order to connect uh, to Cassandra, we need the container ID. Right, so here is that one here. We take this container ID, put it here, and we take the command here right now, and bump um, here. So we are inside um, the SQL shell for Cassandra. And then what we need to do now is to create all this stuff as one line. Okay. 
now if you use like get like described tables okay we just select all select all from messages Oh, we need to add a semicolon. You can see here we have zero message now. No message is there. So that one is ready. And then for Kafka consumer here, we also need to open uh, terminal here. So as we did before, we need the container ID. Uh, the container ID here and then remember here the name here is start Kafka shell here is the Kafka shell that we need so what we do now is we take copy this ID we copy the ID and then yeah as before here we are going to make use of that ID in order to connect to the Kafka bash shell we take the id here and we replace it with this one so we run this one we can see that it changed to this hashtag it's a good news then we need to access our consumer to connect to the broker and then here is the command here blah blah here this kafka 902 the topic name here is demo topic and then the beginning so we make here we start reading from the beginning so this uh, 92 here and demo topics should be exactly what we have here is Kafka 9.2 and then the demo topic is what we now not there in the service consumer uh, Kafka consumer here this demo topic that we have here so it's exactly the same thing that we try to achieve so we copy this one and then we paste it and then we can see that everything is there and listening hopes hopefully uh, this one so we open again another sh terminal here and then now the last thing that we need to do here is yeah so i need the name of uh, the network so docker network list here is the network list so we take this network list here remember inside our inside the compose file here we call it kafka network but you can see that here inside uh, the docker here we still have this uh, the spring uh, the main container name underscore then our network name so we need to open copy this one and 
and then add it here and then in order to run our applications in order to run our applications here so we'll need this network names here we take it docker run network we put the network name here and then port number here and then the build image that we built before this is the image name that we built before so we keep this one and here in this port 8080 here if we come back again in applications here this is the port that we set it internally here this is 80 but outside in the host now we also want to access it on port 80 because you have three interfaces that we will be using so and even before i go there we can go like local os 80 you can see here is the spark master and then if we go to local os 81 here is our spark worker which is running here so we have 80 here for the master this one for the worker and then here in 8082 here we expect this one to have our web page on that one is running but now we have nothing so that is it so we come back again here go to readme and we fire this one up Uh, what is the problem? see here Kafka producer service What is that here? Yeah, I think I see the problem now. The problem is here. I only imported this old service here. Uh, yeah, so I only imported this service here. It should have been uh, the auto wired. So I think this has been the problem here. same thing with this one here you can see arc.gvnet and here consumer 
Oh, uh, so that is the issue. And then same thing. No, no. I think it should be okay if everything. So let's try to continue. And then we still have it in producer. Uh, in controller here for the producer in the controller what we need Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. So we have to go back again from the beginning. I see. Of my fault. So what we need, we need to get Maven clean, right? And then build. Then build a new image. Then now run our application yeah that was the problem so yeah then on that one is done there so anyways part of the troubleshooting that we should be aware of so each time we make a modification here we need to go back and rebuild everything right so if we tap here of course, we have this one now, so you mean that stuff is moving as we wanted. Now let's go to our Thunder client. Here is our Thunder client here, and then let's call this one like a message zero one. So this is a test message from Thunder client to. Kafka. So something like this one. So we set this method here to post. Here is localhost and eighty eighty two. And remember this API here is what we have here. We have API slash message slash send. So it's the same thing. API yes, API slash message slash send. Here we put stuff here and we submit our message. Uh, let's see if our consumer returns something here. So this is the message zero one here. So 
automatically here you can see that our cons Kafka consumer just consume uh, uh, just consume it and then we can also look for we can also press find here and if we come here to uh, where is it uh, consumer here and try to check if our processor is working number of words we copy this one we put it here you can see here we have like 11 watts yeah so our spark is processing everything as expected here is counting the number of words here you have 11 words here and then now let's check our database and see if this message that inter has been uh, saved in our database so for that one we go to cassandra and if we go again with that all messages you can see that all messages are there so if you go back again and post a new message uh, let's call message 02 post it successful here message sent to kafka message sent to kafka then we go here we can see that the second message is there and in our cassandra now we can see the third message here second message so yeah so same thing continue here when we refresh um when we refresh uh, the master here we can see some jobs that have been submitted we have submitted two jobs the first message and the first one and the second one and same thing is that here so yeah so data are been populated here in this um, in the spark here so Later on, we may have you, we could and use uh, Grafana here to show, to visualize, to give you more graphic, uh, more visualizations on these jobs. But yeah, it's also very nice here uh, to see all these nice graphics here. Right. This is a bit step by step how you can make this one. Uh, so we can go on with many demonstrations but this was the purpose of this video to show you how you can connect uh, you can connect uh, kafka with apache kafka with apache and then saving stuff in sandra in cassandra so i hope this uh, short this video it's a bit long i didn't intend it to be long but yeah, couldn't do otherwise. We got some stuff that we had to troubleshoot along the way. It's also part of the tutorial and the training. So, yeah, I hope you like it. And if you have any comment, do not hesitate to drop your comments. Then, um, yeah, that is it. I will also put this code on my repository and then put uh, the link in the detail of this uh, video on YouTube. Stay tuned for the next video and bye.